Uh, hello and welcome to the show. I'm Joe Adams and you're listening to Slick Talk with Blackstone Laboratories. Hello and welcome to our listeners. I am your host, Joe. We're recording this episode on Saturday on account of we're busier than ever during our Monday through Friday hours. I just looked and uh, yesterday we sent out 468 reports and in one of those reports we tackled the question, what is extended oil use? It's a frequently asked question to be sure, so it made for an easy choice when deciding what topic to cover on today's show. If you're unfamiliar, on the back of each and every gas diesel slip, we ask if you're interested in extended oil use. So I've had one customer call me and and say, well, isn't that the entire point of your business? Like, what else are you testing samples for? And I did sit back and laugh to myself um, because what we do is so wide ranging and a good portion of the time, people really aren't even interested in running the oil longer they have no you know they'll see that question on the back of the slip it will totally go over their head sometimes they'll assume that this is some extra test they might have to pay for or if they want to you know even get our opinion on this they'll have to pay more or something like that so just to address it straight on the question about extended oil use is so we know if you'd like us to recommend whether or not it's okay to run longer on the oil than you already are. So to be honest, some people are, well, most people, I would say, perfectly content doing the oil change interval they are already running before they even come into contact with us. And there's no point in us telling them to run longer if it's not something they're interested in. If you are interested in running longer on the oil, though, we're going to take all the report findings into account and then make a recommendation. So, for example, on the back of the slip that I checked out yesterday, it was a sample from a Toyota Prius and looked at how the engine was wearing. Everything was perfect there. Metals were in a good range. They were in a good balance compared to averages. We saw nothing out of the ordinary there. So that's one box checked. Another box was air filtration that looked like there was a lot of excess silicon that could have been dirt or debris getting past the air filter. We had a low silicon level there. That was great. We looked at oil filtration using our insolubles test. Very low amount of insolubles, nothing that would indicate the oil filter was struggling or at capacity or nothing like that. The viscosity was okay, but there was one sticking point and that was the flash point temperature. A pretty low flash point that indicates fuel dilution, and the fuel level was pretty high. The viscosity was still good, but with fuel being a bit over the cautionary limit, in this particular instance, we went with suggesting a comparable oil change interval to what the customer was already doing, not running longer, just so we could keep an eye on fuel. If it proved to be a situational thing, something from the customer just uh, starting the engine just before draining the oil, for example, then we would give fuel a chance to clear up, see how things look next time around. And if that all checked out, then we'd go ahead and suggest a longer oil run. So if your car or whatever you're sampling, if it does look to be in great shape mechanically, then we're not going to just tell you to double the oil run or reach some ambiguous number, we're really going to favor a gradual approach with whatever you're sampling. And that gradual approach is usually, you know, as a good rule of thumb, if it's a car or truck, it's going to be usually about 2,000 miles at a time, just so we can keep an eye on things. You don't want to bite off more than the engine can chew, basically. A lot of people will see oils on the shelf and they'll say things like, good for 15,000 miles, good for a year regardless of mileage. And it's certainly true that there are a lot of products out there that are capable of having X amount of miles on them. Uh, We wouldn't dispute that. A lot of the good oils out there certainly are able to hold up for longer durations than a lot of folks would expect. So we're also going to want to know if the engine is ready for a longer interval, regardless of the oil you're running. 
If it's making a lot of metal on a per mile basis, maybe not necessarily from a problem, maybe just because harder use is a factor or it just happens to wear more than average, well then in that case we probably wouldn't get too crazy with extended oil use because if the engine's making a lot of metal per mile and that metal is accumulating, it can eventually turn the oil abrasive, in which case the oil's just not going to lubricate properly, and you'll have more problems just from running longer. It doesn't mean that what you were running was a bad oil. That oil could have been keeping its viscosity. It could have been, um, you know, free of contaminants. But there comes a point where, regardless of the oil's physical properties, metal is just going to overwhelm everything else. So if you're wondering how to dive into the extended oil use experience, good first step is to try the manufacturer's recommended interval. Send in that sample, and we'll see how things look with a baseline. Moving on from there, what you'll want to do is just get as many samples in that file as you can to establish trends and give us a reliable background for what to expect from the engine. From there, we're going to be able to dial in the ideal oil run, something that will not tax the engine too much, that will keep the oil in good shape physically, maintaining the right viscosity, having no evidence of harmful contamination or the engine struggling to keep up, and then you'll know you're getting the most out of every oil change. And of course, we cannot do an episode about extended oil use without mentioning, at least in part, the TBN. The TBN is the total base number. Now, this is an additional test. It goes beyond the standard analysis. On the back of each oil slip, right below the question about extended oil use, we'll ask if you're interested in a TBN. Why am I mentioning this in an episode about extended oil use? Well, the TBN, which stands for total base number, measures the amount of active additive remaining in the oil. And as you might imagine, active additive is something that folks who want to run longer are keenly interested in, and it is a valuable piece of information. Now, keep in mind, we are not going to avoid giving you a recommendation on extended oil use without a TBN. We can still look at the other factors and see how they stack up and give you our best approximation of how long the next oil change interval should be. But if you're really focused on extending those oil change intervals again and again, trying to find the maximum amount of mileage you should be going, the TBN is certainly an invaluable piece of information. When you're focused on not just extending by 1,000 miles or 2,000 miles, when you want to test those more ambitious goals, that's when a TBN can really come in handy. So if you're interested in a TBN, that would be an additional $10. Um, a lot of folks like to at least measure the TBN maybe in their baseline sample, or they'll send in an unused sample of the oil, see where the TBN starts off. And then they'll sample a longer oil change interval, try the TBN again. As with many things in this line of work, we really learn a lot with trends. So I would say once you have a trend established, you know what the TBN is after 5,000 miles, you know what it is after 7,000 miles, and say you just want to rest somewhere in that range, then I wouldn't say it's a necessity that you have a TBN each and every time. Build some trends, find out what you have after a gradual amount of mileage, and then you can kind of shorten up the testing. You can choose, maybe I'm going to test every other oil change interval now. Maybe I'm going to test just the TBN once a year just to keep an eye on it. It's certainly something where once we get a feel for your engine, how the oil's holding up, then you can get a little bit more liberal um, with your testing procedure and how you want to go about figuring all the information out. We're going to weigh the TBN relative to everything else. I guess that's one thing I'd like to wrap up with. A lot of people have a misconception. With TBNs, they'll think, well, if I have a good TBN value, then everything else doesn't really matter, right? Because the oil has active additive left. Well, that's not really the whole story. Uh, we're going to weigh the TBN relative to engine wear. We're going to weigh it relative to the oil's viscosity, uh, contamination, because the simple fact is active additive is great in neutralizing acids that are normally going to build up in the crankcase as the oil sees more use. But 
the TBN is not going to be enough, you know, a good TBN, I should say, won't be able to keep things like coolant contamination from wreaking havoc. It won't be able to keep excess fuel at bay, excess dirt. Um, you name it when it comes to contamination, a TBN is really just there to help ward off the normal acidity that is going to occur. So that's the last thing I'd keep in mind. Don't simply tack on a TBN and think that, you know, uh, you're, you're good to go no matter what, hell or high water. It is an important piece of information, but not the whole pie. Extended oil use really requires taking the big picture into view. And as always, thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of Slick Talk with Blackstone Laboratories. If anything we talked about today sparked a question you'd like us to answer over phone or email, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'd be happy to discuss it with you, or we can feature your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening. Honestly, I think I like it where it ended just before I said what I said last.